Mariners of Reddit, what's the strangest thing you've seen out on the open ocean? Serious. I have only spent about two months on the water, with about two weeks on the Great Lakes, but even just a couple miles offshore in the Atlantic when it's a foggy and calm night I totally get what sailors talk about when they say sailing off the edge sometimes it looks like the water just stops and there's nothing after it. Sounds similar to the experience of going deep into a mine, turning off your headlamp and sitting completely still. There's nothing else that comes closer to nothing that I've ever experienced. Father used to sell yachts for rich bastards across the Atlantic so they could have it in their Mediterranean and Florida houses depending on the time of year. His first time he got to truly see an open, unmolested starry night, and says he was appalled that it was so unusual to him. And because we're all living in cities everyone's missing out on that kind of natural beauty that almost every other human in history would have had access to. Reminds of the time when in 1990s, there was a power blackout and people complained about seeing strange things in the sky which later turned out to be the galaxy. Strange lights in the sky and water. Usually it's just a shooting star or some sort of bioluminescent sea creature. What is it unusually? Loch Ness Monster. An owl. 300 miles offshore. I hoped it would stay with us or get close enough to catch, but it flew off into open water. Lots of land birds get stuck at sea. Sometimes they accidentally fall asleep on a ship and wake up in the middle of the ocean and try to find land again. Some get blown out from storms. They eventually drink too much salt water and die. The smaller ones get eaten by seagulls. It's sad. It could have been a short-eared owl. Some of them like to travel between North America and Europe or other various open ocean routes. That's just showing off. We were at least 5 days away from land and our ship was covered boat astern in praying mantis. Not truly the weirdest thing ever, but after not seeing much life for a few weeks it was an experience for sure. I think they lay eggs and if you don't find them before they hatch you get a ton of them. I saw a video once of a lady who had them in her car. The baby ones look just like adult ones. Only smaller. One stroke 2 inch for babies. Like 6 inches for adults. One time on the coast I saw a massive storm stretching as far as you could see. Which is of course very far when you have nothing obstructing your view. There was lightning everywhere I can't put it into words. Every city was probably getting a lightning strike per minute. But from my point of view with this massive panoramic view, there must have been 10 bolts of lightning per second. Sustained over at least an hour. Absolutely mesmerizing. Like any good mariner, I grabbed my cigarettes and did the all one foot on the railing and watched. Whales doing ballet in the bay. Hilarious to watch such a massive and heavy beast come flying out of the water over and over again like it's just playing. Meanwhile it's big enough to just crush me instantly. Yeah, whales are incredible. You can read online or hear on TV how big they are. But once you see one come up alongside a boat real close and the thing's eye is bigger than your head and you realize this living creature is literally as big as the truck you passed on the highway this morning. It really is awesome. We had a few small ones jumping about. My grandma has a story about an adult one coming up right behind the boat. Just looking her in the eye for a minute and disappearing. My grandpa and his fishing buddy never even saw it. But it's one of her favorite memories on the water. I was working on a whale watching boat up north in Alaska. One breached off of our port. Like 10 feet away. It flopped the other direction otherwise it would have crushed our boat and a good portion of our guests. The green flash. I was a photographer on a cruise ship can't remember what caused it but I assume it is predictable because I was invited up onto the bridge to watch it. Wow. What an awesome thing to see on the open water. Conditions have to be perfect and you have to have an unobstructed horizon. Green flashes occur because the Earth's atmosphere can cause the light from the sun to separate out into different colors. Quite rare and the flash lasts only about 1 or 2 seconds. In Slovenia, whilst on our research vessel, we saw a pale and bold thing almost emerge from the sea. It looked incredibly humanoid, as in its head was poking above sea level, with a thin layer of water over its head. It was there for a split second, and we assumed it was a diver trying to scare us. Lo and behold, we carried out a biodiversity assessment in that very area and found nothing apart from some smaller fish. But no man. To this day, me and my marine biology professors have no idea what it was, and how it got there. I was majoring in marine biology at the time. We named this species as Baldus manius. 
could it have been a Cuvier's beaked whale? Their heads can be rather pale and they are native to the Adriatic Sea, or it could be a mermaid. Not on the ocean, but whirlpools and rains in the middle of lakes absolutely terrify me. There's something about them that are so foreboding and menacingly. I was on the helms just before period of darkness when one of the stars expanded from a dot to flower shaped orange thing that rotated very slowly. That thing was there for the whole night, probably an astronomical phenomenon. Update, I realized that many people, myself included are curious about the orange thing I saw. I don't believe in alien spaceships, still sticking to the theory of astronomical phenomenon. Perhaps you saw a supernova, a water spout, or an uncharted sandbar in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Other than that, derelict vessels are a little eerie, and pirate boat smugglers are just kind of meh. Edit, I just remembered. One time off the coast of FL one night I was driving parallel to the coast headed south about 50 miles out to sea. I looked right and saw the shoreline clear as a bell. Almost simultaneously someone topside got a text message. You can only see about 15 miles to the horizon from my pillow house. And cell reception is about the same. So needless to say I got that sinking feeling that there was some egregious error with the GPS and that we were standing in too danger. I freaked out and started trying everything I could from checking radar to see if it was picking up land. It was, at 50 nm, to verifying for dometer readings against charted depth to dead reckoning the last 24 hours of course and speed changes. Turned out we were where the GPS thought we were. There was just some refractive FRE going on. I also had visual and radar paint on some vessels in excess of 40 miles, which is also theoretically impossible. It doesn't sound that bad. But it was pretty frantic. Driving through the ocean and suddenly ensure you're in safe water because the atmosphere is bending the light wrong. I'm crew aboard a tall ship here in Western Australia. The boss and told me about weird moments way out off the eastern coastlines 30 plus nm out. When all of a sudden everyone gets mobile phone signal for 5-10 minutes before it goes dead again. Super weird but apparently not uncommon. My family traveled transatlantic in 1957 on a steamship, the SS Constitution. When I was 7, the ship sailed fairly close to the Kapolin House, which was a submarine, underwater, volcano that erupted from the fall of 1957 to the spring of 1958. It is in the Azores off the coast of Portugal or thereabouts. The ship's captain came as close as he dared and we all came out on the deck to watch. From where we were it looked like the volcano was floating on the ocean's surface. They told me that the volcano was creating an island, and as crazy as that sounds, it turns out to be true. On the 27th of September, beginning at about 6.45 in the morning, a submarine eruption, 300m from Ponta dos Capelinhas, 100m from the Isle Hayes dos Capelinhas, began. Whale spot is at Castado Dano, a few meters above the Capelinhas lighthouse saw the ocean churning to the west and alerted the lighthouse keepers. On the 5th of October, the clouds of clay likely rose about 1 km in height and solid fragments reaching an area of 1200 meters around. 1. The buildings in the area began to experience the first damages. Windows were broken. Tiles fell from the roofs. By the next day, the first ash fall began on land. In a few hours a black mat covered the extreme west of island. 1. Reaching 2.5 kilometers from the crater, necessitating the evacuation of the settlements of Norte Pequeno and Canto. 1. Initially, gases and pyroclastic explosions persisted until the 13th of October, while gradually diminishing, but were rapidly replaced by violent explosions, lava bombs, ash and lava streaming into the sea. This intense eruption occurred until the end of October with constant ash raining on fire, destroying cultural lands. Inhibiting normal farming and forcing the residents from local villages to evacuate. By the 10th of October, the eruption had initially formed a small island, baptized Isle Hanova, English, the New Island, Isle Hadus Capelinhas, English, Island of Capelinhas, or Isle Hadu Espirito Santa, English, Island of the Holy Spirit, by the locals. 600 meter diameter and 30 meter height with an open crater to the sea. By the 29th of October, the island grew to 99 meters high and 800 meters in diameter of coarse black ash. We crossed that ocean three times in the 1950s, but that was the most interesting thing we saw. Well, that, 
and the man in a boat that had been damaged by the storm we'd just gone through. His mast was broken and he was adrift. It took hours and hours for the captain to maneuver the ship close enough that we could board the man safely. He came aboard, very thin and wrapped in a blanket. Lucky to be alive and for us to have such a good captain. Solo night watch on a sailboat delivery. New moon with overcast skies. The strangeness wasn't what I could see but rather what I couldn't. Total silence on a broad reach. Surfing down long unbroken swells. No light in the sky. Almost no perceived movement. Just 4 hours of nothingness. Occasionally a wave lit would crest and reflect the light of the navigation light and cast a pale green flash that was the only reminder that I was on the ocean and not cast into an endless void. It was the most unsettling experience I've ever had. Dolphins taking turns surfing in waves behind my sailboat at night. I could clearly see the phosphorescent trail of them surfing down the wave and going between my rudder and keel. More than 20 individuals with the most amazing trails through the water. Went on a trip from Hull to the Netherlands on a fat yacht several years ago. I was doing the sailing, not being sailed. I'm not a Ponce DW. OFC the North Sea is known for its oil gas. What I found strange and almost creepy was the sheer amount of mostly abandoned oil rigs. Just scattered about. Some relatively close together as well. I remember being able to see roughly 13 of them around us at one point. They just leave the old rigs alone after using them? Apparently so. I guess it's just a hell of a lot cheaper to just leave it there rather than go and dismantle it. There may also be no obligation to do so since I believe it's international waters. No laws as such. But I could be wrong. <laughs>